in London. The clock is ticking. The race to the final table has begun. Every second counts. A moment of madness. It's the worst river for him to bluff, and he's still, he's still bit. A moment of calm. Split second reactions. Which eight will survive the countdown? the penultimate day of the PokerStars.com EPT London main event. 604 players entered this tournament. 588 have been eliminated. So we're down to the last two tables. Everyone's now locked up 25 grand. And crucially, they're still in the hunt for the title and first place prize money of 560,000 pounds. Last time, the newbies rose to the challenge as some famous faces headed for the exit. I'd like to say well played, but I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, marvellous, well played. Tried to double me up, you just can't do it, huh? Ludovic Gailic went all-out attack in some of the most aggressive poker ever seen on the EPT. And David Yan continued the Southern Hemisphere's dominance, ending day four, bagging the lead. It's crunch time. 16 players remain. Tomorrow, eight of them will take their seats around this table, the final table. The other eight will have to watch from the sidelines. There are four Brits left in the field, possibly five. Ludovic Geile claims to be German, even though he has a Scottish accent thicker than Sean Connery's personal bagpipe player. One of the confirmed Brits, Leo McLean, is the qualifier we picked out earlier in the tournament. If he makes it through the day, his rail crew may just steal the show. Leo's got his work cut out for him, though. Couple of young bosses left in the field, Jeff Rossiter and chip leader David Yan. 20-year-old David Yan cashed three times at the EPT Grand Final Festival in Monaco, but the Kiwi is still searching for his first title. It'd be great to win an EPT. Um, I think I'd be the first person from Australia or New Zealand to win that title, so it'd be great. I really want to win it. But that honor could go to 23-year-old Australian Jeff Rossiter. He's won more money in live tournaments in 2013 than anyone else in the entire starting field. I feel good about my chances. Definitely shouldn't underestimate anyone at this stage, and I'm sure everyone will bring their A-game. Leo McLean is just happy to be in the game. The 24-year-old qualifier has held his nerve in illustrious company. It's been quite surreal, uh, seeing all the big names you see on TV and playing against some of them. Just the buzz around the event and the, the high standard of play and how big it is worldwide. Just where you want to be when you're poker player. So day five of six of this £5,000 buy-in event. Our online qualifier is on quite the multiplier. He's guaranteed to make 268 times his money. Jeff Roster is a boss at 23 years old. I was a boss at 16, but it was at a supermarket. Some once and future bosses still alive in this thing. Jan Olaf Shavik. The Balrog. He made a final table, I think it was 89, and Robin Ulatalo made one in 71, I believe. David Yan occasionally gets in the booth and does live commentary with us from some of the non-televised EPTs. Lucky for me, he's not very punny. Ludovic Geilich's new to the EPT, but I've nicknamed him The Bagpipes because he lives in Scotland and he is constantly blasting air. Well, our secondary table is headlined by Robin Ulatalo, who came eighth in Campioni two seasons ago, and Jan Olaf Schavik, who came third here in London back in 2006. At the main feature table, we've got current chip leader David Yan, former chip leaders Tudor Pericha and Martin Kozlov, a couple of online qualifiers, Karakusis and McLean, and Agro Ludo. Lines currently 8,000, 16,000 with a 2,000 ante. Actions on Ludo. Pocket eights under the gun. He is aggro Ludo, but a raise here is just fine. The former dealer makes it 32,000. <clears throat> Rich is out. Kalisa Du will fold. As will Kent Road. Martin Kozlov has locked up his first ever cash outside of Australia here in London. And with Ace Jack in the cutoff, he has re-raised. 
Ace Jack's a funny one. It's not really strong enough to three bet in these positions, but it's possible he's just trying to get value from the livest guy at the table. Everyone else has folded. Gylik calls the three bet. He'll have to play the flop out of position. But he's still ahead. He checks to the man with the pre-flop betting lead. It's a pretty sweet flop for A. It's a pretty annoying flop for Ace Jack, and pretty annoying you've now got a C-better board where Ludo's probably gonna laugh in your face. Kozlov continues for 82,000. Like that terrible thin crust European pizza, he ain't folding. Gylik calls. The turn card is the six of hearts pairing the board. Gylik checks a second time. Now the continuation bet I understood. But a bet here is gonna make the pot huge. He barrels for 164K. And I don't think you can get your opponent to fold reliably with this bet. Almost any hand that crushed a flop is going to continue calling. Gylik calls again. His hand isn't a monster, but it's beating plenty of hands Kozlov would double barrel with, including the one he's got. Seven of clubs on the river. So there's now a potential flush and a potential straight out there. Gylik's checked a third time. This board just got real stupid for a pre-flop three-better who's been trying to rep an overpair. And Kozlov... Empties the clip. He bets 380,000. Most overpairs wouldn't bet this river because it's such a dicey river. And Gylic Heroes with eights. Snapped off that bluff like it was Joe Theismann's leg. Don't Google it. Gylic adds 732k to his stack. I was thinking, no, I was thinking to myself, it's the worst river for him to bluff. And he still, he still bet. That's what I'm thinking to myself, man. He's, um, he's right there. Then he's definitely, he's definitely checking back a big pair in the river. Tudor Parich looking at him like he's the weird, angry guy trying to get you on his side when he's complaining about the long line at the bank. Oh, I'm not with him. He doesn't speak for me. Blinds up to 10,000, 20,000 with a 3,000 ante. Action's been folded to online qualifier Georges Karakousis. Before Hold'em, this guy was playing 40-card Greek poker. And look at Karakousis getting loose. There go all my jokes about old guys being tight. But he doesn't even like Matlock. From under the gun, plus one, he's made it 40,000 with 8-9. There's a three bet from Gylik with 9-10. Action's now on Kuli Sadu, who won a GUKPT a few years ago. He's got pocket kings. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm four betting Gylik all day, every day, but I might actually be a little worried about Karakusas having aces because I'm ageist. There's the four bet. Aces for Kent Road. Did he really just say bleep nice hand? He did. I think that might be a tell. I'm all in. No kidding. Well, he is going to get absolutely no action, except for the hand he is absolutely getting action from. <clears throat> the original razor folds. Gylik is out. If you have aces, good luck to you, I call. And Sadu calls. I have it. Couldn't do anything about, couldn't do anything about it. Good luck, Mike. He got me covered, yeah. By 14K. There was a time when someone might have folded kings there, but it was so long ago I had to read about it in a book. Good luck to you. I'm gonna need it. Yeah, but you never know. Poker. Sadu needs a king, but there's an ace! Favor. Pretty good shot, Sadu's drawing dead on the turn. He is set to be our 16th place finisher. Ooh, always sweating. Sounds like a personal problem. Always sweating. A spade on the turn gives Sadu a flush draw. <sighs> oh, my goodness. And another spade oh, on yeah. the river! I've won, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kent Road. Sorry, man. I don't even think I can make a joke. Sorry, man. Oh, sorry. Oh, you went the best time. <sighs> Sadu doubles up. Kent Road left with 14,000. I can't believe it. I was going to say losing like that's the worst, but then I remembered Ocean's 12. Everything's funner when you go runner, runner. Sorry, I feel bad for him. That's the great thing about poker. You're not even allowed to give him the chips back. Feel bad all you want. Meanwhile, at the secondary table, Neophytus Neophytu finds himself all in with kings, up against Jeff Rossiter with ace Do suited. <laughs> Is that his real name? I thought it was a typo. And there's an ace on the flop, and Neophytu does not have a backdoor flush draw. First kings beat aces, now kings are gonna lose to ace deuce. 
While talking of backdoors, they could chop with a spade on the river. But he can only win with one out in case two was too many. Five hearts on the river. And we lose Neophytus Neophytu in 16th place. Neophytu, more like Neapolitan, because he has three flavors of out of here. He cashes for nearly 26,000 pounds. Jeff Roster now playing a stack of over 1.5 million. He has cashed in nine tournaments this year for a total of nearly 2 million pounds. I've played bigger events this year, which definitely leads to having more caches. I guess the biggest one was in the GDAM event in Macau, where I came second to Nick Heineke for a bit over 3 million US, which was, yeah, pretty, pretty good to score. I also won an event in the first EPT London this year, the Win the Button tournament, and then I won a turbo event in Berlin as well. This is definitely like the most major event. This is an EPT main event, which is definitely on a different level, and so it would be great to win. EPT London is on a different level, literally. There's like 400 staircases in here. Well, Jeff has locked up nearly 29,000 pounds, which is small potatoes to him. Make the final table, he'll be guaranteed 60,000, win the tournament, and that's worth more than 560 grand. Well, we've lost the super short stack Kent Road from our feature table, so we're down to 14 players now. Martin Kozlov is under the gun, plus one with nines. He's raising. Leo McLean, our qualifier, has ace 10 on the button, and he is all in. Loose shove against an early razor, but he's not in bad shape. He's not in good shape either. Gylik folds the small blind. To de Paricha in the big blind, also passes. It's back on Kozlov. Can I get a count, please? It's only 15 big blinds total, and much of the time they will be racing. Kozlov calls, and that means our qualifier is at risk. You in the black, you're not doing it. Why do we bother having rehearsals? The door cards are 10. Leo McLean set for a double up now. <laughs> Has to fade a nine on the river. I think they're sweating it hard on me. Easy to say that when the tens already hit. They're not sweating it, they just need some gum. Only two cards will send Leo to the exit, and that's not one of them. Not bad, thanks. <laughs> nice then, Leo. Thank you. Tough couple of hands for Kozlov. He's caused lost over a third of his stack today. You know, you guys could wait until you get home to like the post. These guys have checked in here so many times. The one on the left is now actually mayor of the Grand Connaught Rooms. So a double up for Leo, our online qualifier, the guy that we picked out. Feel free to tweet us and tell us what enormous geniuses we are. And speaking of enormous, Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. I have to find my oyster card. There it is. What's that? My oyster card. It's a loyalty card for Ridgie's Oyster Shack. Yeah. Shuck 12 dozen and the 13th shucks on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not going to work. Dude, what are you doing? I was one shuck away. We're down to the final 14 at the PokerStars.com EPT London main event here at the Grand Connaught Rooms, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. What is a Hippodrome? Am I the only person who pictures like a big stadium made in the shape of a hippo? Yes, Joe, you are the only one. Blind still 10-20. Actions on George's Caracusis. Pocket fours under the gun, plus one. And he raises to 40K. Pocket fives for Leo McLean. The best hand so far, but a perfectly reasonable fold. Action on Tudor Parici, the adrenaline junkie from Romania. You're of Romania. He's on the button with ace nine off suit. And it looks like Tudor is thinking about a three bet. He re-raises to 104,000. Another re-raise of an early raiser at this table, and I think this is loose in general, but even looser against the guy with white hair. Back on Caracusis. He calls. Somehow these two would be racing if we saw all five cards. Karakus is playing the flop out of position and without the betting lead, but he flops a set. So we're probably only gonna need to see three cards. He checks to Paricha, who has just ace high, but continues for 105,000. Karakusis 
with his set of fours is check raising to 210,000. All due respect to the gentleman from Greece, the pie chart for how often this min raise is going to be a monster is just a circle. Well, if he's betrayed the strength of his hand, why is Paricha calling? Because he hates chips? Probably just a bad read. He's got less than a pot-sized bet behind. But he has picked up the nut flush drawer on the turn. Karakusis loading up. Not loading up much. 200,000. Small bet. I'm all in. Paricha shoves. Makes sense. A cough and a call. Two to Paricha at risk. He needs any diamond other than the eight of diamonds or the former chip leader is out. The river card is the eight of diamonds. Full, full house. He knew it was a full house. I'm almost positive he knew it was a full house. Okay. I saw diamonds. I saw diamonds too. Good game. Good game, guys. Nice man. I'll come around. Two to Paricha eliminated in 14th. Good luck, guys. Good luck, mate. Year of Romania. Take it on, Dave. Good luck, man. I liked him. I'm looking forward to Tudor's sequel, Freeder. And George's Karakusis is now up to 2.2 million. Um, I felt really good coming in today, a little bit sick. So I have a like, light coat, but then other than that, I just felt really great, confident. Had a good um, seat at my table, but then I attacked this guy that was a lesser player in my eyes, and it kind of backfired on me a little bit, so what can you do? You can dance, Tudor. You can dance. David Yan raising from the cutoff with ace-10. Leo McLean in the small blind. Has King-10 suited. We know he's dominated, but against a late raise, this is fine to go with. All in. He shoves. All in for 374,000. Well, if Coley's not involved, he's not watching. Yan calls. Leo is at risk, and this time he's got it in bad. And this is where his buddies realize he is crushed. Rather you win. It's nice of you. I'm very suited. Way more tense a moment for Leo than for Yan. David's tournament life not on the line. Top two for our qualifier. Yes, classy reaction from the rail. Well done, boys. They do know what happened, right? Jack, queen, or ace, I guess. The turn card is a brick. Nah, not one time now. One time later. Smart. Leo just has to fade an ace. He doubles up again. That's what's been the whole tournament. The whole tournament. Lose one, 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 lose one, one. Yes. <laughs> you just stick to going all in pre-flop. I think it's the way to do it for me, I think, yeah. You'll be safe. <laughs> so how does Leo McLean feel about being our Ooh. qualifier? <laughs> For James and Joe to pick me, that's pretty awesome. And hopefully they're liking what they see at the table. It's been quite surreal, uh, seeing all the big names you see on TV and playing against some of them. I said. Knocking out Phil Helmy for the main event. Um, it, was, it was a nice pot to win, obviously. Get a bit of TV time, which is always good. Uh, but it was very interesting having him on the table. Very superstitious, yeah. I've been wearing the same hoodie. Um, Starting to smell a bit, I must admit, but hopefully we can carry on wearing it through day five and get to day six of our table. There's also other things like a Mars bar that my friend brought me on day one. It sat at the side of the table for the whole day and it's just been there since. I've had support from home, family, friends, anyone that's ever known me just messaging me. It's a bit insane. The phone's gone absolutely mental. So it's been really, really good fun and I've enjoyed it more than anything, so that's the main thing, really. <laughs> What is up with that laugh? I know he's the qualifier, but does that mean he has to come from the depths of hell? At the secondary table, it's a Teo v Rossiter. A Teo ahead with top pair. Not anymore, that's a full house for Rossiter. That card is juicier than a fine brick lane shawarma. Action's been checked to Jeff a second time. He bets 46,000. That eight really puts the eye in a Teo. No way he can fold. He calls. King on the river. Bad card for Javier, so it's kind of a good one. And that's a massive overbet from Jeff. This is a tough fold to make. Oh. A Teo Hero calls and loses a huge pot. 
Ship those chips to the man wearing the Old West thermal underwear. Jeff Roster now playing close to 1.7 million. An above average stack, which means that Jeff is fifth on the leaderboard, now ahead of Javier Ateo. Ludovic Gailek is the current tournament boss with more than 2.1 million. No one is desperately short right now, with the two smallest stacks playing more than 20 big blinds. And the blinds are up. 12-24 with a 3K ante. Well, Robin Ulatello has raised the button. Jan Olavshavik's in the big blind. Two things. One, Jan, you can certainly call here. Two, I know you're actually Bill Gates. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. Shh. Shavik flops a flush. Ulatello with a redraw to the second nuts. And the preflop betting lead. Action's been checked to him. And the Swede continues for 46,000. Does Shavik call or does he raise? Looks like he's calling. Seems fine. The turn card is the Queen of Spades. Ulatello now has the nut flush. Gross. And that puts a whole new paint job on things. Shavik checks again. Ulatello bets again. 104,000. Robin was probably going to bet this turn no matter what, so by not raising the flop, Jan's given himself a better price to call here. Inconsequential seven of diamonds on the river. Lutalo. Bets big on the river. 288,000. The fourth nuts in a spot where the three better hands are all going to bet into you pretty comfortably. Shavik gives it up. Good fold. Robin Ulatello now has two million. He is a regular on the EPT with a few caches and a near miss in Campione in season eight. And Shavik came close to victory in this very event in season three. I did have a deep run in the EPT London in, in 2006. I finished third in uh, that tournament. Busted out uh, on a spectacular hand. I know it had, has made the uh, EPT's most dramatic pots list. I had pocket trees and wicked Koren, uh, she had his jack. I waited like five, six minutes before I made a call. Turned out I, I had the best hand on the flop, but uh, I was only like 60, 40 favorite. Five, I call four. When Jack fell, it was um, kind of strange because I didn't feel as emotional as I thought I would have. It was brutal in some sense, obviously. Vicky won that tournament, so it was a very important pot for her as well. We always want to win first prize in this tournament, and if I win that hand, I have a shot at winning the first prize. Who cares about first prize? You're already rich off all those word processors and operating systems. Stop playing poker and tell me how to turn off auto update. Back to the main feature table. Leo McLean's folded under the gun. Action's on Ludovic Gailik. King seven of hearts. Ab. Yes, Lee, he's going to raise. He ain't limping in. 48,000. Pocket queens for Kalisa Du. Perfect. Yellow chips are 25,000 each. Blues are 5,000. So this is a three bet. A re-raise to 130,000 from the cutoff. It's a big three bet, but this is what I would sit do with a big hand against a guy who clowns around more often than a circus. Gaelic re-raises. He four bets to 278,000. Do, do, has got position, so he could just call. Cool. He is calling. 610,000 in the middle as these two go heads up to the flop. 9-8-4. Gailik has a couple of backdoor draws, but right now he's just playing king high. And he continues for 262k. It's a safe board for queens, but it's hard to get action on a raise if Ludo's missed completely, which he has. Sidhu calls. More than a million in the pot now. Three of hearts on the turn. Gailik picks up the second nut flush draw which means he's probably gonna slow down less often here than two teenagers in a parked car. He bets enough to put Sadu all in. That's a big bet, but most folks aren't gonna bet so big here with a monster. Got a big idea. I'd say this is typically a trivial call, but this is a massive pot. Biggest pot of the tournament so far. Once you play queens like this, I don't think you can fold. If you're not trying to trap by calling twice with queens, you should be trying to get it in pre-flop. 
Are you gonna show? Is he seriously thinking of laying this down? Those are the words of a man who wants to fold. All right. Bloomin' he's folded! I know it was for his tournament life, but what the bloomin' heck, come on. Big lay down. Tens or jacks? Better. Queens? What? Ahead. <laughs> By a mile. Wow! Look at that, it looks just like Congress. Is this where all the guys in the white wigs take turns slapping each other in the face with leather gloves? I have absolutely no idea what you're thinking of, but that is a church. That is St. Paul's Cathedral. St. Paul McCartney? I thought he was only a knight. Man, you people love the Beatles. Thirteen remain in London at the PokerStars.com EPT main event, but only eight will make the final table. With lives on the line, every decision is key. And before the break, we witnessed a characteristically aggressive move from Ludovic Gailek. The, the blinds are 12 and 24,000. I've got King Seven of Hearts. I'm in raise, as I've been doing, because I've got a big stack and play aggressive. And the boy to my left, Cully, he three bets me. I four bet to two, seven, eight. And he flats. At this point, I'm putting them on some sort of mediocre pair. I thought maybe nines, tens, jacks. And I thought to myself, like, I could put him under pressure during the hand to get him to probably pass. Flop comes, and I continuation bet for like 40% of the pot and he flats. At this point, I'm worried about him having nines, but the way that he acted during the, the time that I bet and he called, I kind of eliminated the fact that he had nines and I put him more on tens or jacks. And I thought to myself, I'm going to have to put him to the test in the turn. Luckily enough, the turn came a, th a three of hearts, which brings me outs, gives me three kings and all my hearts. So I thought to myself, it's a good time to probably put him to the test and put the whole lot in. He's only put in like 30% of his stack, so he's not going to risk putting the rest in if he thinks he's beat. But my image is not that great at the table, so I thought it was a good chance he was going to call me. But I think with the pay jumps, and I could see that he was a bit concerned that he was wanting to get to the final, he went into the tank for a long time and he folded eventually. All right. I didn't put him on queens. He should pass tens. He'd probably call me maybe with jacks. But he should definitely not pass queens. If I'm in his shoes, I call. I cannot believe this guy reps a German flag. His Scottish accent is more intense than Billy Connolly's beard. Well, we've seen how he plays, we've heard how he plays. Now let's play against Ludovic Gailek as we sweat with David Yan in the small blind. Ace 10. Facing a raise to 48,000. Three bets fine because we're out of position, but we need to proceed with caution against an early raiser, even if it is a guy who's liver than the nightly news. A three bet to 133K gets rid of Karakousis in the big blind. By the way, we're down to 12. Nicolau Villalobos eliminated in 13th. Look at David Yang, young Padawan. Gailik calls the three bet in position. If he's not four betting, I'm actually a little scared he might have something decent. Ace, seven, four, top pair for Yan. Great flop to check, not much for us to be afraid of. He does check, and Gailik checks behind. Him checking behind kind of weirds me out a little bit. Nine of clubs on the turn. Yan checks a second time. A lot of folks will bet there, but checking's fine too if we think Ludo's range is very weak and we can check call two streets. Gailik bets 118,000. We're rarely behind here, and his range is, in fact, awfully weak. So I vote for a call. And that's what David Yan does. We've only seen him try to barrel people offhand, so I think check calling all the way is the way to go. Ace of clubs on the river puts a potential straight out there. It's kind of a gross card for us, but I say stick to the plan. Yan checks a third time. And Ludo bets again, 
364,000. Well, that's kind of a bomb. I really hate this river card, but still, I don't think we can fall. He's just messing around way too much. Cool. Jan calls, and Ludo tables pocket aces. Ah, yeah. Case ace on the flop. I knew he should have been worried when he wasn't going all aggro. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I think the only way we lose less there is folding pre-flop, which you obviously cannot do against Angus McWiener Schnitzel. At the secondary table, Stefan Wagner is all in on the flop. Javier Ateo deciding whether to call. I don't know if Wagner would make this move worse than an ace. Ateo does call. Wagner was a big dog before the flop. Now he's an even bigger favorite. How do you think I feel? I just screwed up the sweat with. It's been an up and down day for Pocket Kings. Ateo looking to hit on the river. And he doesn't. Wagner doubles up and survives. If Wagner makes the final table, we have got to play right of the Valkyries, right? While he's still a below average stack. And the blinds are going up to 15,000 and 30,000 with a 4,000 ante. Back to the main stage. Action, folded around to David Yan. Resolute. And he shoves the button with Ace Deuce. He's a shorty. Queens for Karakusis in the small blind. See ya, Dave. No real point a reshove. Cool. Karakusis calls, putting David Yan at risk. Leo McLean folds the big blind. He's also fairly short. What you got, David? I have an ace. <laughs> Two draws the trips. An ace wins all the time. It's the best card. Good luck. You do. <laughs> Gotta admit, the kid takes it like a guy who's been there before. Yeah, and with 28% equity. A 9-8-4 flop. It's pretty good flop. There's no queen on it. Silver linings yen book. Still looking for an ace. The Yan fans are wishing for it. It's a nine, pairing the board. I can turn. David Yan started the day as chip leader, but he'll be out in 12th if there isn't an ace on the river. He's gone. Yes, sir. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Eliminated by Georges Karakousis. <laughs> you're going to the rail, but you're also going to the payout window and probably also your hotel room. And I hate to break it to you, but all the rooms in this country come with a toilet brush for a reason. Ew. So Georges Karakousis, who qualified online, is now playing three and a half million chips. He's enjoyed success inside events on the EPT, but this is his first ever main event cash. Η δουλειά μου είναι plastics. Έχω μία μονάδα πλαστικών, αρκετά καλά για τα δεδομένα της Ελλάδος. Τα τελευταία δύο χρόνια ε, συμμετέχω στα περισσότερα EBT. Κάτι μικρές επιτυχίες, αλλά τίποτα μεγάλο όπως τώρα. Το τι, σε τι προσβλέπω στο μέλλον, τα τρία πράγματα. Όσον αφορά, Αυτό που θέλει κάθε παίκτη, πρώτον τα χρήματα, δεύτερον τη διασκέδαση και τρίτον α πούμε και τη δημοσιότητα. Georgius wasn't kidding about publicity. I just got handed a release from his PR firm saying we're now to call him OG Kousis, and then he's got an album dropping in the spring. OG is raising from under the gun with Ace Queen. Ace King for Ludovic Gaelic. When you're the most aggressive guy at the table, you should really be three betting this, but against a guy with a perceived tight image and almost as many chips as you, just calling is fine too. Gaelic does just call in position. Curly Sadu's off on another wonder. Gonna take a little stretch. Kozlov calls as well with 8 7 in the big blind. Three way to the flop, which is all diamonds, jack high. Two. Everyone's got a diamond. Two of them are big, but only one of those people is a Gaelic. Action's been checked to Ludo. He bets 98,000, gets a fold from Kozlov. Karakousis, not folding. He calls with the nut flush draw. Brick on the turn. Karakousis checks a second time. Ludo bets again. 236,000. Two barrels now. Weird. I know he's semi-bluffing, but it sort of goes against his pre-flop slow play. 
Pre-flop low variance, post-flop high variance with a hand that's got a lot of showdown value. Once again, Karakusis calls. Karakusis is playing it perfectly, which to be fair is mostly to Ludo's credit. It's a diamond on the river. That's the nuts for Karakusis and the second nuts for Ludo. Action's been checked to Gylic again. Sweet check by Karakusis. Ludo gonna do what Ludo do. He bets the better part of half a million. Karakus is just making sure there's no straight flush out there. All in. He shoves. He check raises all in. I love Karakus' line till that moment. Aye, 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 aye. I think a smaller raise gets paid. A shove probably never. Tough to fold the second nuts. He does <laughs> fold. Yeah, buddy. Hey, son. Great lay down by Ludovic Gylic. On the flop, I thought he was going to pass, and I said to myself, he done something, and then he called, and I went, ah, I think he's flopped it. I mean, I said to myself, but I'm not sure. Ah, what do I Brutal river anyway, isn't it, really? Mm. It would have been some check back if I made a check back. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever checking that back, ever. Yeah, nice play. Nice answer. He's blind. Georgius, a little sleeper over there, lying in the weeds. I got my eye on this kid. Karakusis now big chip leader with Gylic and Ulatalo pretty much tied for second as we head over to the secondary table where Javier Atayo is all in and racing against Jeff Rossiter. And the way Atayo has been running, more like Atayayayo. And there is an ace on the flop. Atayo now drawing to two outs, looking for a jack on the river. It's a 10. Good game. The Spaniard is out in 11th. Time to say goodbye to Atayo. He will collect just shy of 40,000 pounds. 10 players remain in the EPT London main event, which means we are two eliminations away from the final table, one elimination away from the final redraw of the tournament. And Jeff Roster is now second on the leaderboard. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com. There are qualifiers every day. All right, I already know where I want to go next. Now, before you say anything, just in case you haven't already learned your lesson, Oxford Circus is also not a real circus. Covent Garden is not a garden. And Elephant and Castle does not involve four towers and a drawbridge being guarded by an elephant. OK, let's go home then. Straight into the action here at the Pokestars.com EPT London main event. At our secondary table, Sen Ung has shoved and been called by Jeff Rossiter. Domination Nation. Unbelievable. Ung's best hope is to hit a five or see a clubby flop. Only one club out there. Not enough clubs. He needs a six, four, or five to survive. But that's a queen. So Sen Ung exits in 10th place for nearly £40,000, and we're down to the final nine. Going out on the Ung official final table bubble has got to be unpleasant. Unfathomable, really. Uh, Jeff Rossiter is now the chip leader. It's time for the nine remaining players to take their new seat assignments up on the main stage. Everybody's coming to the big boy table. All looking for that seat at our 10th EPT London final table. Couple of players looking to keep the title on home soil. Well, Chip Daddy Jeff Rossiter has got one of the other big stacks on his direct left. Gylik's got a pretty good seat draw with the chance to bully Wagner and Kozlov. Sadly, our qualifier pick, Leo McLean, in the one seat is the short stack, with the blind still 15 and 30,000 with a 4,000 ante. Karakusis under the gun with 9 10 off, and he raises. All right, this guy is not tight. He's like a future Ludovic Gylik. He's a looper. Sharvik folds. Kalisadu. Has pocket eights. This is not a good spot for a three bet. He does re-raise to 135,000. Unless he somehow knows that Karakusis is getting out of line like a cheap closet door. Fold it around to Kozlov. Pocket fours. He ditches it. Robin Ulatalo on the button. Mux. McLean gives up the small blind. Roster folds the big blind. Action back on Karakusis. He calls. 
Karakusis is Karalusis. Jeez, UTG and OOP, OMFG. Well, he flops it up and down straight draw. Eight still ahead for now. Sadu may feel like he's got to continue, but I think this is a pretty terrible flop for him. He does continue for 180,000. Sadu miss, and it smashes his opponent's range like a Gordon Ramsay kitchen nightmare. Karakusis calls. He is playing this great, other than the two actions preflop. The turn card is a king. That gives Karakusis a straight. Love a check here. He does check. Will Sadu slow down? Nerp. He bets 250,000. Think the move here is a just call. All in. He check raises all in. Well, the good news is Sadu's got no more opportunity to misplay these eights. Is he actually thinking of calling? I may stand corrected. No, he faults. Georgius Karakousis plays like he's using that 40 card Greek poker deck and he hits like it is too. Big money jumps now as we play down to a winner. Six figure scores for the final six. Remember, we're one elimination away from our official final table and the conclusion of day five. Karakousis with a monster. Blinds up to 2040. He raises to 80,000 with aces and Gylix got queens. He three bets, makes it 170,000. I'd say there was more of an argument to flat here with queens than before with ace-king, but whatevs, this should be awesome. Action back on Karakusis. I'd four bet this if I were him. No one ever seems to believe this guy. He does. It's a re-raise to 380,000. Gylic just calls in position. Now he flats. It's a low flop. Sweet flop for Karakusis because Gylic's not getting away from an eight high board. Not now, not never. He continues for 300,000. Doing a great job of just barreling away. Gylic calls. Ace of diamonds on the turn. Top set now for Karakusis. Gylic officially drawing dead. For Gylic, that should make a bet here pretty much a slam dunk fold. Karakusis bets 450,000. What hands would Karakusis just keep barreling away with that queens are beating? Air's the only hand that makes sense, and Ludo needs to realize he ain't playing against himself. Gylic calls. There's 2.4 million in the middle. And the river card is a queen! That is the fat lady, and she is warming up her vocal cords. Hey. Karakusis hey. slows down, he checks. Poor Ludo, this is an easy value bet like you read about. He bets 750,000. Karakusis hates the spade. After a sight like that, Ludo's gonna think he's winning. Call. Call. He calls and shows the aces. I think Ludo probably should have followed the turn, but I in no way think he deserved that river. Gross. Karakusis, big chip leader once again. The river is uh, very nice, but... For what uh, you may call it, call it, call it. Hmm? It'd be interesting if we fought out the flushing past. Say la vie. Pretty sick. Sicker than the stuck in the middle with you scene from Reservoir Dogs. Sicker than this guy. Phil Helmuth has come to watch Leo McLean, who knocked him out of the tournament on day two. Roster. Raises from the cutoff with 5-4 suited. Karakusis calls on the button with King-10. Sharvik gives up the small blind. Kalisadu folds the big blind. Everything normal here so far. How are you? Top pair for Karakusis. A flush draw for Rossiter. He continues for 115,000. Well, this flop should generate more action than summer box office season. Karakusis calls and there is the flush for Rossiter waste no time in betting 240k still don't think Georgius can or should fold in general if he knows where the hands are then yes geez he calls Karakusis drawing dead 
But the Queen on the river does give him a straight. That is just a god-awful run out for Georgius. Rossiter bets again. He fires a third barrel, 660,000. And Karakusas calls. That was the closest spot there in the river. Sometimes he would have been chopping, sometimes he'd be picking off bluffs. Not this time. Or we'll scratch what I said about Karakusas being big chip leader and apply it to Jeff Rossiter. A stack of nearly five million. Young man, I see you're using those chips. Well, I'm trying. Nice job, nice Thank job. You. you were a nice guy. I'm glad to see you uh, make it down there. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a hell of a Last grind time. still, I've still only got yeah, yeah, 10, yeah. 12 bigs, so a long way yeah. to go, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, how long do you guys play today? Uh, till one more out, final table. So oh, it's 10 This right. is unofficial nine. Oh, last one, so we'll come back fresh tomorrow? Hopefully, hopefully. You can do it, you have a good style to, yeah. to make it. Thank you, cheers. Thank you very much, cheers, appreciate it. One more. One more, and we're there. <laughs> Just some of the royal treatment you get when you're our online qualifier. No big deal. Blinds are now 25 and 50,000 with a 5,000 ante. Stefan Wagner picks up the aces. Well, this is a good time for aces. Let's see how much he raises. He's going for three times the big blind. Pocket queens for Martin Kozlov. Oh man, Martin, buddy. I am sorry. This is an easy shove, but I don't think I'd feel great about it. Wagner's been involved less than Switzerland. It's not quite a shove, but it is a virtual all-in. Most of Kozlov's chips are now in the middle. Action folded around to the blinds. Sadu's out. Gaelic mucks. Wagner calls. Oh, so we're gonna see a flop. Okay. Not much chance Kozlov folds on the flop, even though he's drawing practically dead. Uh, remember Kuli Sadu? And also, I hate this bet. Queens has to call, but if he had something worse, he could maybe fold. He calls all in. Oh. Wagner is a 96% favorite. Kozlov's gonna need help on the turn and river. Running diamonds or running queens. It's over. Okay. Martin Kozlov drawing dead on the turn. Martin. Somebody's excited to be making a final table. <laughs> Cue up the Wagner for Wagner. So we have our final eight as Martin Kozlov exits in ninth. He is the final table bubble boy. Everyone else returns for day six. That's when we'll settle that little matter of the 560,000 pound first place prize. Jeff Roster comes into the final as chip leader ahead of George's Karakusis. It's a tale of the haves and the have nots. Half the final table is short stacked, including Ludovic Geilich and our qualifier, Leo McLean. Went short stacked really early as well on day one, so to be here making a final table and not the shortest stack as well after the grind out today is just out of this world. I don't know what, don't know what to say. Next time, EPT London concludes with one of the liveliest rails we've ever seen. I think I'm more one that one. Down, boys. And focus is sharply on the task in hand. That's the first time I've been all in and at risk. I hate being all in. <laughs> to win EPT London, the dream come through. Definitely shouldn't underestimate anyone at this stage. I think I'll win this tournament.